What's up, Paladins fans? A plenty. It's I Hold Shift. And this goes raging after day two of the HRX Paladins World Championship qualifiers. A very, well, it was a pretty straightforward day, but there was a lot riding on it. A couple of bold predictions on our end. If you remember back to yesterday, we are only sitting after day one. A 25% pick rate. But our map totals were pretty close at about 55%. We'll tally that up and we'll come back to it at the very end of this one. Let's start things off where the day started. It was Mouse Sports taking on Space Station Gaming. One that honestly could have gone a number of ways, if we're being completely candid, as Mouse Sports was, of course, a team that had never won when it came down to the PPL this last split and have never been very good on land. But we haven't seen them in a long time since the last time we saw them was a year ago. But Space Station, we're a little bit more fresher with them, although they do have a little bit of a sub as Sodhawk will be playing with them and well it looked good for Space Station we had this one predicted at a 2-0 and well to be completely honest it was a very interesting start to split Stone Quarry in the first map two slow OBJ fights but really good target prioritization for Space Station to finish off the map with a push ending it at a 4-2 scoreline. Jag Falls well, uh, after that first game, it was pretty quiet over there in the Mouse Sports booth. Uh, you guys all okay over there? Nope. Nope. No, 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 they're not. They got absolutely stomped on Jaguar Falls, so we would get this one correct. It was a 2-0 for Space Station. They go on to the next round, where they will meet a very good opponent in Big Egos. Well, maybe not the greatest of opponents, but it will be a good matchup, I think, regardless. And that second set of the day was kind of a true testing set as there were a lot of expectations for Zaga talent as they would be taking up against Sour Team who was without Nino Sassala, which is one of their bigger damage dealers as we went through. The day would start off with Bright Marsh and well, we had this one, again, we wanted this one to go Zaga's way. I, I had a feeling that with, you know, Latin America being a stronger region this most recent split that they would show up and perform. Well, they did not show up at all in the draft for Bright Marsh. It was a really bad draft for Zaga. They never really stood a chance against the Inara. Uh, plus, Fernar Fern Fern Fernando? Who's Fernando? Fernando, frontline. They were also playing into a Willow. They tried to take the Ruckus and everything. They just didn't have the shielding. They didn't have the burst damage. They would end up getting pretty handedly wiped on Bright Marsh. Second, it would be Jag Falls. And again, we had this one going 2-0 in favor of Zaga Talent. Keep that in mind. Zaga just looked completely outclassed. Huge ups to Nixus, who showed up all day today playing damage for Nino. And Zaga really, uh, they're getting carried by their damage dealers. Exterminia looked good. On the flip side, you didn't see anything up front. This didn't look very great. Moondog played well as well. It just, Zetha didn't really do much for me. Puliuli did not look like he was as confident as he was playing with Sadhawk. It just goes so well for Zaga. So they would fall on this one. 2-0 favoring Sour Team, so rip our prediction there. And then to finish off the day, or in the winner's bracket, finish off the winner's bracket round one, we would be seeing a battle of Europe, Team Cryptic taking on Armada. And we said a couple of days ago that don't sleep on this Armada team. Everyone's underestimating what they're able to do. As we saw them this last summer, they really did perform well and looked impressive as far as their mechanical ability to play the game of Paladins and understand when they have advantages versus when they don't. Well, Stonekeep is where we would see things start off. And we had this one going a very even game. I guess you should probably hit that first. It was a 2-1 that we had favoring Cryptic to start the day off uh, with our predictions. Armada would take things under their belt and control it all the way forward as they started off on Stonekeep. Really smart, soft resets and counterattacks when they had five coming back out of spawn. Cryptic had kind of a question mark draft, and it ended up biting them in the butt just a bit. So Armada would take the first game in a close one. And then Frog Isle, Armada looked like they were about to throw this one away. They pick up the Talus on Frog Isle, which is something we rarely see as a flank option on Frog Isle. In fact, we barely see it ever. It's never happened. I mean, it's happened, but why? Why would you ever have that happen? It's never really been all that successful. Somehow, some way, Talus is able to outfrag a stationary and pretty much unhindered victor. It was a good start, 1-1, one, one, and then it just... Blue wide open for Armada. They would take this one. Uh, what an overestimation of Cryptic, I think, just generally speaking. They will fall. Armada, they will move on. And then, uh, well, to finish the day off completely, uh, a, this one was a quick one. Sanguine takes on Ryder in the loser's bracket, our first loser's bracket game. The first team 
to go home would be established. And, well, I mean, we already talked about it. Saying when they have no reason to lose the rider. Nobody in the tournament has a reason to lose the rider. And they wouldn't. It was 2-4-1. So good for a rider for picking up a couple of points. But they'll be the first team out of the tournament. Sanguin will move on in the loser's bracket, which we will cover a little bit later as far as how that's going to pan out. But let's go to a prediction time. Okay, so tomorrow we've got two winner's bracket games in round two and the rest of the loser's bracket games in loser's bracket round one. We'll start up top and we'll just do all of round two winner's bracket. Okay, so the matches you're going to see tomorrow, Fnatic will take on Kanga, Virtus Pro will take on Splice, uh, kind of in between. There'll be a winner's bracket game, loser's bracket game, winner's bracket game, loser's bracket game. You know, it is what it is. So first and foremost, Fnatic taking on Kanga. Did we underestimate Kanga in their first initial judgment when they were playing up against SK? Yes. However, they still lost a game to SK. Do we think that Kanga has the ability to make it le less mistakes than it in round one against a much better team in Fnatic? My opinion would be not so much. I've got this one going Fnatic's way at a 2-0 scoreline. Although I think these maps could be 4-2s, 4-3s, I still think Fnatic with their experience, their ability to punish mistakes, and their kind of, you know, familiarity to the land environment will probably supersede that of Kanga. It could be very well 2-1, but I still see Fnatic getting out of this one. Uh, I have this one going 2-0 just for the map predictions because, honestly, I, I don't want to see everything go 2-1. It's too easy to say this is a close matchup, so it's going to go 2-1. I still think Fnatic will take this one at a 2-0 scoreline. The second match that we'll see in the winner's bracket will be Virtus Pro taking on Splice. This should be a good one. Two of the lower seeds when it comes to the EU and NAPPL. Virtus Pro in their first matchup versus Sanguine. We actually had them losing to Sanguine, thinking that they were just going to play too passively. Well, it ended up working out for them as they had a 2-0 victory against Sanguine. They're playing up against a more determined Splice, but still very fresh and green Splice. I have this one going 2-1, favoring that of Virtus Pro. Now, I think that this very well could be a 2-0 for Virtus Pro, but I'm throwing Splice the benefit of the doubt because they did look really good playing up against Ryder, which that's like saying I'm really good at dunking on a four-foot hoop. <laughs> There's really not much to be said for that, but at the same point, they still look like they're out and they're ready to go. They get those first initial LAN experience jitters, you know, the anxiousness kind of out of the way. They build some confidence going into Virtus Pro. They can feel like they can go into that game playing their own style. I think they'll win their map, but I still think Virtus Pro, even though they're very hesitant to utilize their advantages when they have them, I still think that experience will actually move them through this matchup against Splice. But it's going to be a fun one to watch. I'm actually really excited and I'm hoping that that one will go three games. Obviously, I'm hoping that. You know, my predictions are right. But regardless, it would be cool to see that game go three games and be close all the way through. Third game that we will not see tomorrow, we'll see it the day after, will be Big Egos taking on Space Station. And in case you missed it, Edgem from Big Ego said that it's going to be an easy clap pretty much for Big Egos to take down Space Station. Well, based on what I saw between Big Egos taking on a very vulnerable and weakened Renegade squad, overextending but having good point control versus Space Station, who, when they were playing Mouse Sports today, Looked like they were a little bit more centric, and they weren't playing the same clean style of Paladins that we were used to seeing back from the Springland, or even some of it from the summer, but they're close to being that. And honestly, I have this one going Space Station Gaming's way 2-1, to one, simply because they don't make as many mistakes over extension and positioning-wise as Big Egos do. Now, what I will say... Big Egos will outfrag Space Station. I will not be surprised to see Big Egos have more damage and a better KD line than Space Station, but Space Station play the point better. That's why I have this one going three games. I think this one's going to be a really telling set as far as the young talent in North America and what Brazil can kind of get behind in their region as the future kind of is at our front doorstep right now with this squad. I'm excited to see Space Station versus Big Egos. Unfortunately for Big Egos, I still think Space Station with their control and this their centric mindset when it comes to not only point controls but also pushing payloads, I see them taking this one at a 2-1 to one scoreline, which leaves us with our final match in round number two. This is a tough one to call. Sour Team looked really good today, I think, generally. Considering that we weren't sure what to expect with Nino not being there, Nix has stepped up. He had a really solid performance. I think second and Hayes looked pretty solid all the way through. It was a very, you know, they out they outplayed Zaga from, from front to back. There were a couple of hiccups positioning-wise and a couple of things that goes, what are you doing? 
there's a lot of youth and inexperience in that roster. Whereas Armada took on Cryptic and they played a really smooth game having instances of really smart soft resets, a couple instances where they really popped off and utilized their advantages, but they also slipped in a couple of instances that they really shouldn't have. Because of those little slips, I have this game going three games, this set going three games. But I have Armada taking this one at a 2-1 scoreline. I know a lot of people that I've been doing the viewing parties with don't agree that Armada will make a run through the winner's bracket. They do think that they'll make a run, just not through the winner's bracket. I think that this bracket really favors the side of Armada. This bottom half of the bracket really opened up with Renegades not having their full roster. That's just flat out. If Renegades has their full roster, I think they run through this bracket relatively easily. But they don't. And Renegades not being in this bracket anymore opens it up for someone to really be a dark horse and make it into the winner's bracket uh, semifinals for essentially what would look like to be free. And now with four teams that are left in this bottom bracket, Big Ego, Space Station, Sour Team, and Armada, whoever comes out of these games are going to dominate the storyline for the next couple of days. So get used to hearing that whoever wins these games on Thursday, get used to hearing their names because you're going to be hearing them a lot from the caster desk. I can almost guarantee it. Now... We have to switch down to the loser's bracket because that's still a thing as we have two more games to finish in round number one. Those will both be happening tomorrow. Renegades will be taking on Mouse Sports and Zaga Talent will be taking on Team Cryptic. This is the last chance for all these teams. Now, to start the things off, it will be Renegades and Mouse Sports. That'll be the first match that we see. Wow, how do you pick between these two? Well, the answer in my book is simply you take a look at not necessarily what's bad for both of these teams because that list is longer than, I don't even know what. It's long. It's longer, it's long, really long. It's long. All both these teams are not playing well. Here's what I'm gonna look at though is the, is the positives. And the biggest one that comes to mind when it comes to something performing or not performing at LAN is communication. There's too much stuff going on in, in Mouse Sports book right now. They're not talking, you saw the clip earlier where they're all just like sitting there after losing. Like they don't even care to be there. I don't know. They're just shell, shell shocked. And I think the same thing's going to happen. I think Renegades, they're very in tune with their problem with Loki not being there. They know what's up and they know that, you know, they're not taking it too hard, I think is the biggest thing. And I think they're going to come out in more of a positive mental attitude and more positive in their communication. They'll be trying to fuel themselves up a little bit more than I think Mouse Sports will if they start to lose this game. So I've got this one actually going 2-0 in favor of Renegades over Mouse Sports. Sorry, Mouse Sports, but you guys need to make some changes. Cephic Cloud's carrying you hard right now. So in the bottom side of things, you'll have Zaga Talent taking on Team Cryptic. This should be a good one, mostly because both teams really were overestimated, I think, by a lot of people's minds. I think this is going to be a pretty big proving point. I think, again, these two teams will come in pretty fueled and re-amped and re-energized. That's why I think this game goes three, because they're very evenly matched teams. It's tough to say. I really want to say Zaga will take it, but the problem is that front line. That front line is so open and so full of holes that I think Team Cryptic will actually end up taking this one. Although it will be close, I, I see Extermini and Moondog popping again, but not enough to carry Fariul and Zetha, who have just been kind of big open holes. Cryptic will take this one, I think, 2-1 to one and move on and await their opponent from tomorrow. So that's what we got as far as predictions go. Um, I... Goodness, we did not have the greatest of first rounds. Hopefully our second rounds uh, do better. And, uh, well, let's take a look to see how exactly we did. Well, it looks better. Maybe not much better, but it does look better as we are 3 for 8 now in overall sets, raising us up to a 37, technically, 0.5%. We'll round down. We're not giving ourselves that much credit. And then we're 10 for 16 overall on maps, so we actually boost that up to a 62%. So we're, we're getting there, all right? Round 2 is going to be where we save ourselves. Let me know what your thoughts are about the games tomorrow. Again, that's Fnatic, Kanga. Uh, Virtus Pro versus Splice and Renegades taking on Mouse Sports and then Zaga Talent taking on Team Cryptic. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you have still running all the way through this tournament? For most of you guys who say Virtus Pro. I just have a feeling that you guys are say Virtus Pro. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Again, we do watch these games live on my Twitch with some analysis and breakdown. If you want to join us, feel free to stop on by right when the games start. You can find the information right there. And then we'll catch you guys tomorrow for more reactions, predictions as we go through. Until then, Keep raging on, everybody. Later, later. Bye-bye.